No problem. Good afternoon. My name is Michael Zwak, and I'm going to talk to you today a little about the concept of new space. This is a very abstract term, and I really want to define it for you, what it really means, uh, what it is, and how it's transforming our future in space. Now, my story starts working at NASA in 2007. I was asked to work at NASA Ames Research Center on the Lunar Micro Rover Project, which you can see here in the bottom left corner, the rover, um, after garnering several years of experience with robotics in high school. Now, this was a time, remind you, of uh, 2007. NASA was gearing up on the Constellation program. We were going back to the moon under the mission guided by uh, President George Bush. Now, NASA hadn't been back to the moon since the Apollo era. We hadn't had to develop technologies. Uh, we needed to gear up to build new sciences and exploration vehicles. Now, I was working on a student team, and we weren't guaranteed a mission uh, per se, but we knew that our, our chances were high because we were trying to fit into a very small form factor, and we wanted to dedicate this mission to, to something that NASA really needed, which was a really lightweight and cost-effective rover. Now, working with other students over uh, interning and um, this project, uh, sometimes even concurrent with studies, was very difficult, but I grew to this project. I worked on the communication systems, the radiation system. I knew the electronics inside and out. This rover became very close to me. It was very rough for me in 2010 when George Bush canceled the program. So that we were no longer going back to the moon, that we were gonna look for asteroids and look at going to Mars. Now, this was kind of a transformation for me as well, because this is when I discovered new space. I was looking for a way that how, um, really humans were going to be able to more economically and more sustainably actually achieve a future in space. Something not guided by policy or geopolitics at the time. Now there's a definition up here because it is a very abstract term and especially if you're not familiar with it. People, businesses, and organizations working to open the space frontier to human settlement through the economic development. Now, some of you may be familiar with a company called SpaceX, led by Elon Musk. Over the past year, they've made three trips to the International Space Station. Now, they're working with NASA as a, under contract to develop cargo and human-rated uh, vehicles to actually uh, help NASA in its mission that they no longer have a, a launch vehicle. But SpaceX is beyond that. They're doing things beyond just what NASA is asking for them to do. They're a new space company because they're developing rockets that'll actually be reusable. This has been the largest setback in the space program for the past 50 years because rockets cost millions of dollars. If you use them once and throw them away, it keeps the, the, the barrier to entry extremely high. It makes it very difficult for other organizations to get up there to do things to actually create an economic environment that's sustainable. Now, once SpaceX achieves this in the next few years, we're talking about actually developing an, this vehicle so that it, it gets its crew up there, and it'll actually come back and make a vertical landing on the landing or the launch pad. This will completely change things because we'll be able to refuel it and help launch another thing a couple hours later. It'd be no different than an airplane. This is only one step, though. Some of you may be familiar with another company called Bigelow Aerospace. It's led by Robert Bigelow, who owns a uh, hotel chain actually around the country. Now, he's working on actually putting a hotel in orbit. He actually has two there already, but he signed a contract about two months ago with NASA to install one of these uh, inflatable modules to the International Space Station and get some experience in making sure that it'll be uh, human-rated so that humans can stay there, they can vacate there, they go there for honeymoons, or even just to explore or do long-term science missions. This is only one organization which is trying to do this. There's several, several others. And in fact, this is just the beginning. The vision is that we have a space settlement future. And the way to do this is we need to create space stations which would be no different than how it is here on Earth. I'm talking about trees, water, air, hu uh, hospitals and schools. We're actually talking about bringing civilization to the stars. We're trying to create a future that's no different than here on Earth. This isn't easy, and there's actually several ways, <laughs> several complex issues about this. One company was uh, announced earlier this year, Deep Space Industries, which I'm working with the founders of. We aim to attack this mission by basically grabbing an asteroid and harnessing the resources from it. There's ice, there's metals, there's several resources on this which we need in order to create a sustainable space program. By taking this water, or this ice on it, we can create water, we can create hydrogen and oxygen, which is what rocket fuel is made of. This will allow us to go farther in space. This will allow us to actually 3D print the objects that we need to create these space civilizations, these large space settlement uh, stations that get us to these other galaxies and get us to these other solar systems. This isn't easy, but these are the tools that are gonna get us there. This is a product uh, for the deep space industries. It's known as the microgravity foundry. 
And through extracting the ore and printing things in a zero-G environment, we can create these, uh, these stations one object at a time. Now, you don't just have to be involved with one of these large rocket companies or doing technical work to be involved with the space organization. Now, how many people know what today is, April 12th? Today is the anniversary of human spaceflight. Yuri Gargarian flew 52 years ago today. He was the first man to show us that humans, human space was actually achievable. First man to fly, do an orbit around the Earth, and return. Every year, this is a celebration to the space industry. And I encourage you to go to Armstrong tonight. There'll be a party going on there, held by the local SEDS chapter. Now, SEDS is an organization I'm incredibly fond of. It stands for Students for the Exploration and Development of Space. I'm a leader of the organization today, and I encourage every student to seek out and get involved with them. We are passionate about space. You don't just have to be technical. There's also non-technical projects that SEDS does. But the goal is, is that you can work with these companies who want to create these space-settling futures. You know, Elon Musk is a founder of SEDS. He seeks the students who are developing the satellites and the rockets and these other projects that SEDS is developing. He wants students with business skills. He wants students who can write and communicate and do these other things. There's no reason that new space or this concept of a space settlement has to be any different than how it is here on Earth. Space isn't easy. This is actually a poster that's been on my wall since I was age 12. Now, I was trying to rebuild my life then, but this is very much true to the new space community as well. Its, its essence is that persistence and passion is what's going to lead us to being successful. The poem reads, nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. The talent will not. There is nothing more common than unsuccessful men with talent. The genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. That education alone will not. The world is full of educated derelicts that persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. This is incredibly, incredibly powerful. And I encourage anyone who's seeking a passion, whether it be space or not, to take these words. There's another saying in space, ad astra per aspera. Space is incredibly difficult. There's people who have lost lives. There's a lot of uh, geopolitical reasons. The reasons we may have even gone to the moon in the first place might have been geopolitical. We don't know. But Beyond that, space is difficult, developing the science and technology, but it's through the hardships that we will reach the space by staying passionate and staying persistent. The only way to fail is not to try. Thank you.